nothing in the chamber nothing in the mag well dropping the slide and no i didn't damage anything because the sas2 url ul um has a little cutout in the barrel there that gives the uh extractor some room so if you see here i'm looking at it i'm not sure if you guys can see it but the extractor's right there you can actually see it and with the slide all the way forward the barrel is not touching the extractor so i'm not damaging anything when i drop a slide and I picked up that little tidbit of information from uh, Graham Bates. So some things I haven't shown yet are, and the gun is clear by the way, you just saw it. Look at the, the fitment back here. The extractor is, is flat, it's flush with the slide. It's not sunk in, it's not protruding. Fitment is good, there's no gaps there. Very, very slight play, side to side. Mainly in the back, very, very slight. It's the tightest fitting gun and all of my guns for you know in all of my uh my gun pool um so this is the ultralight the bull armory sas2 ultralight 3.25 inch it is a legit 2011 it's not a double stack 1911 it's a legit 2011 there is a difference the difference is that the, the grip is modular Double stack. I like the grip because it's long enough to where I can get a full grip and my pinky's not hanging off. Still got a little bit of room there. In fact, I'm barely touching that lip right here. And if you notice, so the gun comes with two mags. I bought two extra. I also bought this Hollow Sun. It's a, uh, not sure if you can see that. Let me see if I can cap capture that. I think the camera's catching it right there. I see a portion of it. So this is the 507K X2 um, ACSS Vulcan in red. So I, I took it to the range last night and put quite a few rounds through it. So right now the gun's at like f a little under 450 rounds. Um, I think it's 449. Um, and of all of those 449 rounds, there's a, uh, there have been six failures to, failures to feed. Um, so the failure rate for those 449 rounds are 1.33%. That's pretty damn good. Um, I'm not sure, I haven't been keeping track of how many actual GH, GHP I've shot versus how much are FMJ, but, um, I want to say it's roughly half. So yeah, I've been spending a lot of money on a GHP because I, I'm trying to determine how well this gun eats GHP. Uh, so I would, I, I would say that, uh, I don't think there's anything to worry about. The 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 ammo that I focused on that didn't have issues uh, are the Golden Sabers uh, in 124 grain. I did shoot some in 147 grain as well. Um, those did not choke the gun, but both of those round uh, those ammos I shot from I believe seven to ten yards, and they were shooting a bit high. Um, so I've been using, what else have I been using? Herder's Defense. I can shoot that accurately. Uh, it doesn't jam up the gun. Um, point of uh, impact matches my point of aim. Um, 
So I'm using that as carry ammo for now. I also bought a uh, an extra trigger shoe, a flat trigger shoe. It's in silver. Um, so let's talk about that. So I have problems getting this trigger shoe off, the one that's currently on the gun, the one that comes with the gun. I think it's the short and curved trigger shoe. Um, if you look at their website, they have a listing of maybe probably nine to 12 types of trigger shoes. Um, so this one's the, the curved and short. Um, it's held in place by, and you're not gonna see it here, and it looks like it might be coming loose there, so I might need to retighten that. The uh, over travel screw. Um, I had a bitch of a time trying to find uh, an, an Allen key that'll fit that. So it looks like, uh, so when you get the gun, it comes with a slew of different types of tools and screws and stuff. Uh, but um, it came what, you know, with what appeared to be an Allen key. Uh, and it fits in a hole, but it, it doesn't do anything. So when I looked at it, um, it's not, it's not Allen shaped. Um, it's rounded. Uh, and it's just small enough or big enough to where, you know, it's the perfect size to use as a takedown tool. So I'm not sure what happened there. Um, this gun doesn't need a takedown tool with the recoil spring that it comes with. Um, so I don't know if they put the wrong wrong tool in the bag. Uh, so so there's that. And then two, I, I couldn't figure out what exact size of Allen key I needed. And after some research, I saw someone on uh, YouTube that was having the same issue with you know with getting the the over travel screw out. Of the trigger shoe area uh, and he said that he used a 1.3 millimeter allen key so i went you know i looked on lowe's website before i went thank god i did because i would have been pissed they didn't have anything there i looked at uh home depot's website to see if they had any locally they didn't have any there you know i'm, when I'm talking about kits then you know you're not going to find these like in a separate package uh, they, you know, there's no one out there that sells just one Allen key. It's usually in a kit. Um, so I could find, I even went to Harbor Freight's website. Um, I couldn't find anything there. So what I decided to do was go on Amazon and search for Allen key kits uh, that had that size Allen key. I found one. It cost maybe 15 bucks, yeah, which is which is cheap and when it arrived i tried it and the allen key fit and i was actually able to get that over travel screw out um so i spent 15 bucks to get the trigger shoe out when really the kit should have included the allen key um so that that was a little bit frustrating there another frustration is that once i got this trigger shoe out I uh, I tried to put the, so what I bought was a flat silver trigger shoe, a short trigger shoe. So it's exact, it's almost identical to this one except it's silver and it's flat. And it does not fit in there, it requires fitting. So that's another con. You know, a trigger shoe pretty much in this, you know, this is a modular shoe. It should fit just as if, it shouldn't require fitting. It would be the same as if I ordered another takedown uh, or, or slide catch here. Shouldn't require any fitting. So uh, so there's that. So I need to make a note that that over travel screw is starting to come out. And what I'll need to do is pull that out and put some, uh, I'll pull it out a little bit and then put some uh, blue Loctite on there. Um, so as I'm using the gun, I'm carrying it in a 10 core, uh, Kurtum three holster. You can see where there, there, and there, and I've had the gun maybe a month. So the finish isn't, it, it could be more robust. This is designed to be a, 
a um, a carry gun. All of this, uh, all of the this fluting, fluted barrel, the slide has all these cuts in it. It's designed to cut weight. Um, all of this uh, anti-snag stuff, the beaver tail and the, the bobbed hammer. Uh, both of those are beaver uh, are, are bobbed. Um, that hints at this gun being a carry gun. And if that's the case, they should make the finish more robust. Uh, as well, I've been complaining about the grips. The grips aren't the best. Um, they're not bad. Thank God they're not any worse. Uh, but they could stand to be better. Um, pick up the gun. My first thought is that it's 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 light, but it's it's a bit slick. Unless I tamp down on it. And if I tamp down on it, it's okay. But I, w I would prefer it that the grips to be a little bit more aggressive. Um, so, almost 500 rounds to the gun. Uh, again, um, I've said this in uh, prior videos. This gun has, it, it's, it's easy to manage. I'm not going to say it doesn't have recoil. All, all short guns do, but um, this shoots easier than some of my other uh, micro compact guns. Uh, I have a couple of subcompacts, um, and one of them has a shorter barrel than this, um, and it is it is somewhat snappy. I would say that they're about the same, uh, but. Uh, it's less noticeable with this gun. I'm not sure why. It's probably because of the way it's sprung. Um, but it is super easy to control. It's super accurate. I've been shooting out 10 yards. Last night I went to the range and I shot maybe 112 rounds, mainly to zero this uh, optic in. Um, and it was, it was fun. Uh, usually I don't go out past seven, but uh, the, the groupings, you know, my 10 yard uh, groupings look like my seven yard groupings. So I, I notice no spread. Uh, this hits where, where I aim and it's even easier when I'm rapid firing with this optic. Uh, this is the first time I've used an optic on a handgun. Uh, it is fun. Um, it is easy. Um, and I'm, <laughs> I'm sold on, on optics. For handguns before I was like well I can I can use the irons and I'm I'm just as accurate with the irons but the thing with this is is it, it I can quickly I can aim quicker not only that my follow-on shots are quicker uh, and more accurate um, it's just it's awesome uh, one other thing I had uh, a problem with was I should have shot more than 112 rounds last night, but uh, what I did was, before when I bought this optic, I had done some reading on the Bull Armory uh, subreddit page, and uh, a lot of people were complaining that the the slide cut was wasn't even, and so when you mounted the your 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 hollow sun. Um, the gun was like uh the elevation was kind of jacked up so a lot of people were running out of elevation adjustment uh without having to use a shim so the fix would be to kind of order a uh an optic shim i call it optic wedge same thing right um that you put between the uh the slide and the plate or the optic and the plate um and it's 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 a very thin wedge, and it's designed to give you more uh, uh, better uh, what do you call it uh, optic elevation adjustment. Um, and so I blindly put that on, thinking that I'm gonna need it because that's what people are complaining about on the internet. And I got there and I wasted half my ammo because I couldn't get the zero to move. The closest I could get the zero down in elevation was eight inches and it wouldn't budge and, I, and then I ran out of uh, adjustment 
So I'm like, what the hell? I couldn't figure it out. And uh, I had shot maybe 70, 80 rounds already. So I stopped and I was halfway through my range session. I was there for an hour. And uh, I decided, okay, well, I have a little bit of time. I hope they don't yell at me because I went to a new range yesterday. And so I'm unfamiliar with their rules and their nuances. And what I did ended up doing was, okay, well, they're not going to want me to kind of just be fumbling around with the gun. So what I did was you know, I laid it and pointed it downrange, laid it on the table, got my screw, and just did this. Pulled it off, you know, manipulated the gun with my fingers, nowhere near the... And they had cameras in there and stuff, so they were probably watching me uh, to make sure I wasn't doing anything dangerous. So I actually got the, the optic out off, took out the wedge, screwed it back in, knowing that uh, my screws would eventually come loose, right? Uh, but I just wanted to quickly test since I was running out of time and I already wasted half, uh, probably three quarters of, of the rain session, right? So as soon as I got that tight and I started shooting, I was hitting dead on. So, moral of the story is, don't believe everything you read on the internet. It may or may not affect you. I'm not saying that the person who posted that uh, lied, uh, because several people did it. But that was, be, you know, between now and six months ago, and apparently, Bull Armory, Bull Armory was paying attention. Probably someone complained, they'd been reading about the complaints, uh, or maybe someone went directly to them and told them about it, but it's now fixed. So I don't need a an optic shim for this, right? Uh, so that was main. That was all of my range session yesterday. Uh, me forget getting familiar with the gun, familiar with the optic, uh, fixing some issues with that, you know, the optic, and uh, learning the nuances of the new range. I'll be going there again. I'm probably gonna apply for a membership tonight. Um, and probably plan to visit every week for the next month or so uh, to get more range time with this gun. Uh, as well, I am seriously thinking about maybe tonight or tomorrow night pulling the trigger and getting Alpha Foxtrot S15, which is a similarly sized 1911. It's a double stack 1911. It's not a 2011 because it's not a modular framed gun, um, but it, it, it's, it's, an, it's another nice gun. It's thinner than this at the grips um, and it's it's double stacked it uses shield arms 15 round mags uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about going ahead and getting that um, I was hope I was planning on maybe waiting till next year but and I might wait until July because that's when they're supposed to get their optics ready um, guns in but what I'll do is maybe I'll uh, if I buy it this week I'll just send it somewhere to get an optics cut, you know, get it, you know, get the slide cut for an optic. Uh, but yeah, I'm loving the gun so far. 500 rounds within a month. That's not bad for me. Uh, money's not the issue. Ammo's not the issue. Time is the issue. Um, and plus, I'm doing some things to get it dialed in. You know, I've been ordering parts, ordering mags, um, doing a lot of dry firing. And uh, I actually detailed strip this once because I was curious. I was like, well, if I can't get this trigger shoe off, how do I get access to the trigger assembly? And I've never taken apart a uh, 2011. So uh, I took it down all the way until I, uh, until I couldn't go anymore. So pretty much the only thing I had left to disassemble was, so I took the screws out of the the grip module but I could not get the the grip module apart from the the frame um, it requires me to kind of stick something in there to wedge it and I didn't want to damage the the uh, the finish on the gun so I stopped there uh, but it's it's required to take this thing apart to get the trigger out I mean even if you want to polish the, uh, the internals of the trigger in order to do that, you have to remove the trigger assembly. Um, so the trigger bow is is only accessible by taking apart the frame and the, the grip module. You'll you'll see what I'm talking about if you Google uh, if you do a Google or a Google or a YouTube search on uh, detailed stripping of uh, 2011. 
uh, last thing the uh, bobbed uh, hammer and beaver tail um, some people have been I've seen some people saying that they don't like uh, the uh, the bobbed hammer because they like to thumb down there or they like to and, and this is a big no-no here uh, from a safety standpoint uh, not from a philosophy standpoint uh, lowering a hammer on a 1911 that has a round in the chamber it's a big no-no but I saw a lot of people complaining about that oh, I don't I won't have the option of doing that with this gun shouldn't be doing that anyways right uh, on an empty chamber well, why not just drop the hammer point it point the gun in a safe direction and drop the hammer um, you know these guns are designed to be cocked a lot I don't care what JMB uh, you know planned at that's inception of the gun because that's not the way the gun ended up you know to, to meet the the US Army's or the government's uh, US government's uh, contractual uh, I guess uh, language he had to add a safety and and you know if you buy any 1911 what you're gonna see in the manual the operating manual of each and every gun is that you should not be lowering the hammer on a loaded 1911 I mean you do what you want because that's what people do right but it's unsafe half cock using you know dropping it to half cock is unsafe wasn't designed to really be kind of doing that so that's my spill uh, the the Bob Beaver tail if I tamped down on it like uh, not this range session but the session prior I was shooting SD ammo and the, some of the ammo was rather hot and so I was having a, a grab I was grabbing high on the gun and the recoil was like wasn't quite cutting in, into me but the the beaver tail was there's some points here it's not fully rounded off and uh, they were really digging into my the meat of my uh, my hand here so uh, if that's a con I mean you can certainly take some tools and kind of uh, uh, follow those down um, or you know soften soften those edges but eh, it's only happened to me once uh, wasn't doing it last night I can actually feel them digging in now but uh, as long as I'm not bruised and, and it's not like distracting it's it's fine to me all right I guess we're done